I'd like to say I'll never forget him, or what he's doing, what he's done. I surely would. Ain't never letting go of his old friend with a sturdy grip like that. If you're feeling low, count on the buttery flavor of our own Bastion bourbon. Zolf's travels ain't much compared to what the kids had to go through for all this. The memorial. Here a kid can pay respect to the old world and earn it in kind. The valediction. Just another one of my sketches. Nothing more. Words can't express what happened, but they're all I got. That's Zolwood Grove. A nice quiet place to show a musket a good time. That's a scrapyard where folks got to smash things and call it community service. That's the Langston River. Used to cut all the way to the wild. Think it was bad then. The city's unwanted things all met their end in the yard. Folks who fouled up would do their time here, smashing things to bits. The quicker they worked, the sooner they could go. Folks learn to plant their feet and put their backs into it. Others would plot a course to navigate that sea of junk. A good day smashing to feed a family for a week.
Ever want to just smash things for a while? You know where to go. A sail hammer's only as strong as its spine. And that's a strong spine. Ever felt a Zolwood gourd? Like picking up broken glass barehanded. At Zolwood Grove, marshals learn to make every shot count. The trick was to pop all those nasty gourds without wasting ammo. Had to catch a bunch of those gourds in a single shot. Funny thing about muskets is they work best up close. They kept on training until they mastered those muskets. Marshals did more than just stand around shooting, of course. The Langston River flowed free and wild till the Calamity drank it all up. Maybe all that water just grew wings and flew off. Riverbanks swarming with windbags. They're so bent on finding the core, they hardly notice the kid. Lucky for him, a certain famous ferry barge is still afloat. Weeping Nelly. She sends some squirts crying home as she leaves port. Maybe Nelly knows the way to the core. Maybe she can slip right past all the clamor on the coast. Or maybe not. The security skiff pulls up portside. Nelly's just another windbag to those guns. Just then, the windbags notice who she's sailing with. They're pretty steamed about what happened at Cinderbrick. They try to cut her off. They try to slow her down. They try to knock her out. Well, Weepin' Nelly tries harder. Try as she might, though, she hits a snag. Kids gotta help her get untangled. Favors for favors.
At least she picked a good spot for a break, cause the core's right there. Then the kid hears an unusual sound, like a hundred flapping wings. Peckers. They had their own eyes on the core, but why? He finds Weeping Nelly raring to go. Turns out she's got a special surprise for when the waters get rough. She's gonna need a little help with all them peckers. Trafty things think they're king of the roost now. Rest of us only wish we could fly in times like these. Security skiffs keep on coming, starboard side. Don't seem to care what they shoot, as long as they hit something. The windbag's getting an even better idea. Kid almost falls again. They aim to smash Weeping Nelly to splinters. Well, it all proves too much for poor Nelly. She's just gotta make one last stop. With her last breath, Nelly gets the kid to solid ground. Solid ground in Pecker country. Seems a calamity ain't hurt the Pecker's appetites. They want that core real bad. Might be they want it just as bad as a kid. Kid shoes them off, knowing they'll be back. Know how many times kid nearly fell off the barge back there? Three times. Now, listen close. You should remember this next part. Why go to Prosper Bluff? Used to take an enterprising man or a plain old fool to venture out that far. The city was the most beautiful place in the world. We all knew that. But on the other hand, some folks just yearn to see the things they're told they can't. And that's why you go to Prosper Bluff, ain't it? 